are so thankful for you, our volunteers. We would like to invite you to an appreciation dinner for volunteering your valuable time and efforts to further His Kingdom here at McDermott Drive Alliance Church. Every week you see our worship ministry on this very stage. And all around the room, our tech teams are working behind the scenes. And while we fill the stage with our instruments and vocalists, our tech team is also behind the scenes, running five different systems all at one time. Each week, Arwana and Agape and Mums Morning volunteers spend their time sharing the love of Christ with the children of our church. They comfort, they hug, they play games, they help memorize scripture, and they teach all at the same time. Our First Impressions team is dedicated to ensuring that each of our guests are welcomed into our building, offered a hot cup of coffee, have all their questions answered, and finally seated comfortably to hear what God has for them. If we didn't have any volunteers, this is what Sundays would look like. It would just be me, my guitar, standing here on stage in the dark. Without our incredible volunteers in the worship ministry, we couldn't do what we do every week. We also want to recognize our life group leaders who so faithfully open their homes and their hearts to their small groups each week. Finally, our library ministry, our food services ministry, and our comfort quilters ministry all make such a difference for our church family here at MDAC. So thank you volunteers for your dedication and your love for our children and families. And thank you for your continued patience as I learn this role. I'm excited that we now get to serve all of our volunteers on June 11th at 5 p.m. here at MDAC. The whole family is welcome and we'd love to see you all. We will even have childcare. We look forward to serving all our incredible volunteers from our congregational care ministers to the Joy Ministry, from Converge to Youth and everyone in between. Please register at mdacbrandon.com so that Pastor Daryl knows how much brisket to prepare. We look forward to serving you, our volunteers. Well, I want to welcome you here this morning, and uh, indeed, brisket has been ordered, and if more of you register, uh, maybe we'll have to pull out the hot dogs as well, but I've heard that even hot dogs taste good on a smoker, so uh, we were, we are were going to do our best to, to gather, and, and, and we've been asking ourselves as a staff, how do we say thank you to the people who... Uh, serve in so many different ways. It's hard to even begin to count how many different individuals, although we have counted, and it's in excess of 250 to 300 different uh, volunteer spots that we have within our congregation, so thank you to our volunteers. Uh, we do uh, have kind of an exciting week planned, an exciting month planned. I've been on vacation for the last couple of weeks, and so I knew I needed to, to catch my breath before entering into June, because June uh, is going to be an exciting month. We have a lot that is planned, and it, you know, the things that we plan, we plan them around our mission statement of reaching out in love to God, to His people, and to the world. We long for people to come to understand what it means to walk in intimacy with a heavenly Father through Jesus Christ. We long uh, to, to be a place where we are serving and loving one another, and we love to be a place that is looking uh, beyond our church walls to what, what gospel opportunities are around us, both within Brandon and Westman and around the world. Thank you so much for giving. We uh, recognize that every week uh, so many of you faithfully give through your offering to the church, and we are thankful that, that you do that. Uh, there are some ways, if you are wanting to know how you can give, there are some ways behind me, whether through e-transfer, debit machine in the foyer, uh, online, as well as you can give through the old-fashioned checks uh, in an envelope. And so, again, just uh, I want to say thank you to that. Uh, one of the things we've got coming up in June, June 25th at 11 a.m., we're only going to have one service, and it'll be down at the Discovery Center. Uh, Church in the Park is again happening, and so we did this last fall uh, and looking forward to doing it again. So you can bring a picnic lunch. Uh, you can also, there's going to be a food truck. Mexican King will be there, uh, so if you want to be, you know, weren't able to make the sandwiches beforehand, uh, we've got you covered with the, with the Mexican King as well. Uh, so 
invite your friends. We're going to be sharing the gospel. We're going to be sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and giving people an opportunity to respond. And so if you um, are praying for a neighbor, a loved one, uh, bring them along. It's going to be a great time. You know, one of the things we've learned over the last, uh, we've done these three or four times now, these church in the parks, bring an umbrella. And not necessarily because it may rain, it might rain, but uh, the sun. And so, again, if you want a little bit of shade, you might have to bring your own. So if you've got an umbrella, bring it along as well. We have baptisms that are coming up next Sunday, and so we're calling them spontaneous, although we're telling you now, uh, I know some of you have been preparing and taking the class, and some of you are just still pondering, is baptism uh, something that you want to, uh, want to do? And so if the Lord is leading you in that way, then next week, if you want to come to the service at the end of both services, we'll have... Um, shirts and shorts and everything that you're going to need for baptism. So even if you come and you're not prepared to be baptized, uh, we, we, we're going to have you covered in that. Uh, also, have you heard we're doing a volunteer appreciation evening? Next Sunday evening at 5 o'clock, we're going to be uh, just gathering together as volunteers. And some of you may say, well, I've only volunteered that one time, and it only was like a, a short little thing that I did. There is no small volunteer um, appointment. And we just want everyone who has been part of the ministry, in regardless of how many hours you may have spent, uh, we want, want to participate with you in that. And then we also have district conference that is happening. Uh, of course, we've got our president, Reverend uh, Darren Herbold, is with us this morning, and the rest of uh, district leadership is going to be coming later on this afternoon and into tomorrow. And so you are invited to participate in our district conference. And so maybe you want to come to district conference um, for the evening sessions, uh, both 7 o'clock on Monday and Tuesday evening. Uh, those are going to be times to hear from our denominational leadership, international workers, and uh, our district superintendent and our president once again. So you don't just get to hear them today, you get to hear them as well uh, on Tuesday evening. And so looking forward to that. Um, I always forget what, uh, was I supposed to say anything else about district conference? Ah, come, it's going to be good. I, I, I'm looking forward to it as, as, we, as we get to host uh, our district. And again, um, I just want to welcome Reverend Darren Herbold with us, and so thankful to be able to hear what he's going to be sharing. I heard him in the first service about going all in, and I hope that each of you will be responsive to the way in which the Lord might lead you to say, you know, what is it that I'm withholding, and I hope that he's able to lead you to a place uh, where you understand uh, where your next step is for the kingdom. So may you have a, a great morning, and, and God bless you. As, as, as we worship together. Worship team, why don't you lead us in worship? Thank you, Daryl. I was trying to think of, is there anything else that you need to say? And my only thought was, yeah, don't miss it. You want to come, and you want to come because we all know of the incredible family that we have here. I hope you guys know how much we as your pastors absolutely love every single one of you and how much of a privilege it is for us to be able to serve alongside in God's kingdom with each of you. And we are part of a bigger family, and our brothers and sisters, and maybe some aunts and uncles are coming, and that's who is coming over these next few days. And we have an incredible uh, larger church family, more than just McDermott Drive Alliance Church, but as we gather together with all these other pastors, it really is something that I, I don't think you want to miss. It's going to be incredible. We're going to see the Holy Spirit move in awesome ways. So I invite you to stand as we come into a time of worship through song this morning. And Psalm 46 starts off by saying, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Maybe you need to hear those words today, that God is your refuge, he is your strength, that no matter what your story has brought you, no matter what life has brought you today, great celebrations, maybe things that you're not celebrating. God is right in the midst of it. And then at the end of that song, verse 10, it says, be still. And that be still is this idea of don't worry, cease striving. Don't look about in a state of panic, but just be still in the presence of God and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. God is our stronghold. He's our strength. He will be exalted, exalted over all things. 
And as we gather together this morning in this room, online as well, welcome here. It is so great to be able to worship with you from wherever you're at. And please say hi to us if you're uh, there and you would like to. We love chatting with you from wherever we are, whatever this week has brought, maybe what this day has brought, the great celebrations, the things that are weighing us down. We bring them all before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Declare that he is worthy that we have reason to celebrate in every circumstance. And we bring all of our collective stories, we bring our past, we bring everything into this place of worship, into the presence of God, and we will watch him move. And it's so cool that as we gather together, we gather together with all these different things. We also gather together with different nationalities, and we saw that God just read that God is going to be exalted among all the nations and something that I love about our church family and love about you guys is all the different nations that we have here and something that you may not know is Yana and Dine they come from a different place than Canada from South Africa and uh, as we were preparing for this week we thought that we we're going to try something a little different and there's going to be a part of one of the songs that you're going to think what's going on and they're going to be leading us in Afrikaans a language that you may have never heard before but the cool thing about worshiping together in the body of Christ. Every tongue, every nation comes together to declare that he is worthy. So we do that this morning. Let's worship together. Day the Lord 
rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. It's from morning to dancing, from glory to glory, from morning. From glory to glory, from morning to dancing, from glory to glory. This is the day the Lord has made. So what are we waiting for? La 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 la. Come on and praise the Lord. La 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 la. What are we waiting for? La la la. Spirit, you, you alone 
Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest, and without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart. prayer and we're going to be praying for a number of things but I want to pray for the the Bruno family and um, some of you who know Ernie, knew Ernie, uh, know that he passed away here just a couple of days ago. We're going to be having his funeral service on uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m. We want to pray for Kathy and their family as they grieve uh, in this season. So let's join now. Let's come to the throne room of grace together in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we've just declared our need for you. We thank you that regardless of whether we're in a season of rejoicing or a season of grief, we need you nonetheless. And we thank you, Father, that you, you meet us exactly where we're at. And I pray that, that we would honor you in our worship, in our praise, in our service. I pray, Father, there'd be nothing that we would hold back from you because you are truly worthy of it all. And so I thank you that, God, you did not stand at a distance from humanity, but that you came close in the person and the work of Jesus Christ, fully God, fully human, living a life that was sinless, 
going to the cross to pay the penalty of our sin. And I thank you that in Jesus Christ, we no longer need to stand distant from you. That you bring us into this relationship with our Heavenly Father, Jesus. Thank you. Father, as we gather here, we uphold one another in prayer. I thank you that we don't live life without a a, a need and a desire for others. And so I pray that you would continue to bring the body around those that are in a particular need right now. And we think of Kathy and their family. We pray that your Holy Spirit would meet them, that your Holy Spirit would come upon them and bring peace to them as they grieve Ernie's life and his family and friends and the congregation as we gather tomorrow for the funeral. I pray that ultimately your name would be lifted up and that we'd be able to uh, grieve the memory of someone who was so dear to so many. We pray, Father, for Crisis Pregnancy or a, a Pregnancy Support Center of West Man. We thank you for them as our partner for this month and we know they, they serve a, a big need within our community and I thank you, Father, that they bring... Uh, hope and healing to women and families who need support during pregnancy and not just during the pregnancy but also in the parenting and so i pray for their director ruth denmore as she um, serves these primarily women of our community and i pray that you would anoint her with a measure of your holy spirit your holy spirit would just fall upon her so that she might lead in a way that Uh, brings healing and brings hope. We thank you as well for the many other uh, organizations we partner with and today we we want to particularly pray as well for Christian Heritage School. Father, this week it's come through um, financial burden. Uh, Father, I know they've got uh, a lot of decisions that they're, they're making as a school And we pray that it would continue to be a a school that would be vibrant within our city for many years to come. And so I pray that you would uh, give wisdom to the board, to the leadership, and give comfort to those that are on staff. We pray as well, Father, for Grand Valley Church. We thank you for this sister church of ours, and we thank you for um, the fact that we partner in the gospel with them. Pray for... Uh, Pastor Vicki and the congregation there as they meet and as they worship. May your Holy Spirit uh, guide them in worship. May they reflect upon you and your glory this morning. And Father, we, th- we thank you for those that give to the ministries of our church and our denomination. And I pray that you would bless those that gift, give and each gift that they give. And may each gift be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. And then, Father, finally we pray for our president, Darren Herbold, to thank you for him and for calling him at this time to give leadership to our denomination. And I thank you for the unique gifting that he has as he leads us as a denomination. And so bless him as he comes and opens the word to us, and I pray that you would speak boldly through him. And we want to also be responsive by your Holy Spirit to the words that he's going to share. May we be open and receptive to that which you want to speak to us. And so we give you thanks. We lift your name up. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to have... um, Reverend Darren Herbold come and share with us. He's uh, about a year into, a little less than a year into the role uh, that he holds now, and he was elected as our president last July, and so he's relatively new at it, but he's not new to Kingdom Ventures. Thankful for his experience in ministry and in life. Uh, He's married, his wife Naomi, and they have three children, Esther, Judah, and Rebecca. You're going to get a chance to see them, a little not live, but you're going to see a picture of them in a couple of minutes. Uh, but he was an international worker in Thailand. Uh, he's an entrepreneur. He started an organization to help combat uh, trafficking uh, 
uh, as well as gospel multiplication. And so it's just exciting to, to see his entrepreneurial uh, mindset as he thinks of the gospel. Um, and as well, he's been a pastor on staff at Beulah Alliance. I've had a number of my family attends that church, and so maybe some of you know, you know some of them. Um, but uh, Reverend uh, Darren Herbold comes to us as our president, and so would you give him a McDermott welcome? Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I think we can do better. <clears throat> you know, I was thinking, I was thinking about... Uh, Church isn't an event or a show or a production. We know that, right? But it's a, it's, a, it's a meeting and gathering of regular people learning about who God is and in light of that, who he calls us to be. And I know we don't always feel excited to come to church, but I love the local church. And so it is a privilege to come, especially as we think of so many people that can't do this on a regular basis. So I trust today as you engage that you would feel uh, the energy and the revitalization that comes through the Spirit as we dive into His Word. I I'll give you a, a quick picture of my family. You'll see my wife, Naomi, there. Uh, actually, the temperature, by and large, in Thailand, this is a year or so ago, is the same, minus the palm trees. It's almost, every day, it's almost 32 degrees. If it's a cold day, it's 30. And, uh, but it's always humid. So th there's Naomi, and uh, we actually, she's from Grand Forks, North Dakota. We met at a Bible school. And so she's straight south there, and uh, then lived in Edmonton for a long time. Esther, our daughter, she just turned 19, so she just graduated. She spent one year in Texas at Cape Norite, a Bible school, a one-year discipleship school there. Uh, she went totally country, like pink, bling, cowboy hat, boots, the whole works. And she's loving that. She's actually at a camp in Minnesota where Naomi and I served when we first got married. And uh, Judah is our gentle giant. He's 6'4" loves everything sports, and uh, but if you pray for, if our, if our family ever comes to mind, pray for, please pray for Judah. Uh, he's doing well, but as you can imagine, grade 11, it doesn't ma matter if you're moving across town, the country, or internationally. That's a hard move, and uh, so he's probably felt it the hardest amongst all of us. And then little Rebecca, she is, uh, she's 11, I just turned 12, and she's our evangelist. She loves talking about Jesus, so right now she's having these little, uh, I don't know, She's just having these little gatherings at lunch, and a lot of her friends come from a Muslim background, and they have these conversations about faith. They even asked her, because she was listening to all their stories of faith, and they said, so w w did, you, did you want to adopt our faith? And she says, oh, no. Um, I just wanted to hear and understand, because Jesus actually has answers for many of your questions. And I was sitting there going, like, who are you? And uh, this, this is awesome. So I don't know what the Lord has on there. Hey, I, I want to bring you greetings from across the country, uh, the, the Christian Missionary Alliance in Canada. Here's a little newsletter. If you want to take out your phone, you can. Uh, this isn't advertising or marketing. But in, in the past, there were so many, what I've realized, there were so many ways we connected. So if you're a longtime Alliance pers person, there, were, there was missions weekends, and there were deeper life conferences, and then there's things called like Alliance Youth Corps, and we had all these ways to connect and, and build connection. And we've lost some of those things. And so some of these things, uh, I don't know what the new iterations of those are, but one of the ways is telling the story of what's happening amongst our churches across the country internationally, how we can be praying and align together. So just if you want to sign up to a newsletter, you can. Don't feel pressured. You can always unsubscribe, and I will never know. And, uh, but this is one of the ways that we do that, and we journey together. As we dive in today, I want, I want to talk about uh, making a difference, going all in. And I especially think historically when I think of some of those that have gone before us of how they were these great examples of people. But life is hard. We're, we're all dealing with our own issues, and then depending where you are, you, you're, you come to church, and maybe Daryl's preaching, or you're reading the Word, and the, and the Bible is calling us to be difference makers in the world, and sometimes, if you catch me right at some of my worst moments, I feel like my mind breaks, and I just want to stop, and I want to say, just, just stop, just be quiet. I can't do this. It's just too much. It's too big. It's too difficult. It's just... Truthfully, it's easier to quit. And this was exactly where I was now almost nine, ten years ago, arriving into Asia in this island in Thailand. We've never, ever been to Asia before. I'm there for two months. I'm looking at my steering wheel in the parking lot of a, of a grocery store, and I, I'm literally yelling as loud as I could. You know, sometimes we say we yell, but we're not really yelling. Like, I'll show you yelling. And I was yelling at my steering wheel, I can't do this. 
And I, like, if you would have been in the parking lot and saw me, you would have thought, like, someone called the police. This person is a risk to society. Like, this guy is losing it. Um, and I began to think in this moment, like, I, I can't do this. I can't make a difference. Why? What, when I'm here, I can't speak the language. I don't understand culture. Everything is completely new. This is ridiculous. And then even now, sometimes maybe you're, you're thinking those things, and then you read the news, and you go, oh, my goodness, the world is ridiculous. What is going on? It all feels impossible. And then all of a sudden, when we're in the worst of these moments in our lives, or at least in my life, this, this quiet but this massive lie begins to creep in and form. And the, why, the lie whispers so quietly, you can't make a difference, you're right. Maybe it whispers to us, McDermott Drive Alliance, you can't make a difference. Why are you even gathering? Don't bother trying, it's pointless. Friends, this lie is prevalent and pervasive in society. It's very real. And it can sideline side you from making a difference. Maybe you've found yourself that way sometimes. Maybe you're watching online and you're like, this is, this is where I am today. But, and I think you know this too, no matter where you are in life or no matter what's going on, you, you know that this, that this message, this lie, it is exactly that. It's lie. It's, it's not truth because you, can, you just feel that there is actually more to life than this. And friends, that's, not, that's no accident because that's exactly how God has created us to be. And so when I was in my like mental breakdown mode, there was this moment where like I'm done freaking out and then it's almost like Jesus supernaturally invades my space and he whispers back to me, you're right, you can't but I can, and I will, but Darren, but McDermott Drive Alliance Church, you must submit fully. You must surrender completely, and you must obey wholeheartedly. You must go in, you must go all in with me. Will you? And friends, if you hear nothing else, that's the secret. To live a life, a life that makes an eternal difference, you submit to Jesus, not just a little, not just on some days, you submit to Jesus in all things. And so we're going to look at a story in John chapter 4. If you've grown up in the church or for a while, this story excuse me, will be familiar to you. If you're newer on your journey or you're still exploring who Jesus is, I'm so thrilled you get to hear this story of Jesus with a, Samar with a Samaritan woman. It's this fantastic story. So you'll see it on the screen here. We'll, we'll go right through it. We'll skip a few verses here and there. But in John chapter 4, starting in verse 3 to 4, it says that he, be that Jesus, left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now it says that he had to go through Samaria. Now I want to stop right there. The Bible says that Jesus had to go through Samaria. Geographically, that's actually an incorrect statement. Because if you look at a map, being in southern Israel, there were actually three ways that they could have gone, that Jesus could have gone. One was through King Herod's property. So, okay, granted, not a great idea to trespass on, king, on the king's land. But then there was another way they could have gone the other way. But then there was this third way that they could go through Samaria. But the, the Jews and the Israelites and Samaritans, they hated each other. So he didn't, this wasn't necessarily a great move to go that way. So Jesus didn't have to go through Samaria. This was perhaps not so much a geographical statement as it was a spiritual statement. What was it that God wanted Jesus to do in Samaria? We find out, verse 5. So he, that is Jesus, came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus says to her, Will you give me a drink? Because it says his disciples had gone into town to get some food. Now, the woman was coming to the well at noon, which is actually quite odd. Usually, you came to draw water in the morning or the evening when it's very cool. Like, no one wants to do manual labor when it's going to be 32, 35, maybe in their context, 40 degrees outside. But at the hottest time of the day, this woman comes to the well. And we find out later the reason she's coming is so that she could avoid everyone else who would normally be at the well earlier or later because this woman had a reputation. This woman was a prostitute. So this woman is coming to get water, and Jesus reaches across racial lines, cultural lines, and engages her in a conversation. He was being incredibly intentional and specific. She's the reason that Jesus had to go to Samaria, which brings up point number one. If you're a point person, you can, take the, you, can, you can write these down, see these. If not, just follow along. But point number one of going all in is caring about people regardless of their story. And you go, hey, that's not rocket science. No, it's not. Caring about all people, 
across a wide spectrum of opinions and beliefs that all of a sudden during COVID got really complicated, didn't it? It means embracing intentionality. Now, 18 years ago, 19, 19 years ago, I didn't care about some of the things I care about, day, care about today. 19 years ago, I had no clue what American Girl dolls were, or quite frankly, how ridiculously expensive they are. And then glittery shoes and princess dresses, and now iPhones and musicians called Shawn Mendes and cats. I hate, I hate cats. But now I find myself snuggling one every once. Actually, to be really honest, like a lot. I snuggle this cat a lot. And, and, and it's, just, it's just crazy to me why this happens. But what happened is, 19 years ago, my beautiful daughter Esther was born. And she completely changed my life. And she loves cats. And what I began to realize is that you can't truly love someone without caring about some of the things they care about. Now, just for randomness, because I think it is still a little ridiculous, Thailand has a cat cafe. I don't know if anyone ever been to a cat cafe before, something like that. The next picture you see, yeah, it's coffee, it's overpriced cake, maybe with a few cat hairs, and there's a hundred spoiled cats running around. And there's even a sign, please do not pick up the cats because it creates mental anxiety for the cats. So all you're allowed to do is just watch these cats. Anyway, we go to that place because you can't have a relationship with someone and not care about some of the things they care about. I believe it's a spiritual impossibility for us to have a growing relationship with Jesus and not care about some of the things he cares about. Jesus cares about people far from God. He was intentional with every person he met. So here's a reflection question for us. We'll have a couple of these today. Are you willing to pray? Jesus, help me to love people like you love people. Going all in, number two, means seeing like Jesus sees. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? Because remember, his disciples are getting some food. Isn't it so amazing that um, sometimes we can be so focused on something, so zoned in on something that we completely zone out of everything else? You ever notice that with yourself sometimes? Uh, I, I remember I was, I was working, this is years ago now, I was at Beulah Lines Church when I was pastoring there, and, and, and I was leaving, I don't even know what the event was in the evening, but I remember leaving the church parking lot, and then I have no recollection except for I was in a black room. So what that means is I left the church parking lot, I went through the residential area, I eventually made it onto the Ring Road, which is called Anthony Hende. I drove about 22 to 24 minutes. I got off at 111th Street, I went through two intersections, turned right into McEwen, went through about another three, four intersections, made about two lefts, one more into my driveway, was stood, in the, st- stood in the car with the driveway until the garage door went up, drove into the garage, waited for the garage door to come down, sat there long enough for the light to turn off, and I came to. I have no memory of passing hundreds of people. Um, I mean, that's terrifying, especially now if I do it, right? Because I'm used to driving on the other side of the road. Um, but we do this, don't we? It's, it's, it's very easy for us to be active but not aware, to be living but not looking. For these, you know, it could just be a coffee break at work, not an opportunity for a meaningful conversation. In this story, I think there is actually a story behind the story that we sometimes forget about. This is what's happening to the disciples. Now, most of these guys are teenage boys. And if there's a group of people that like to eat and enjoy food, it's teenage boys. And not only that, they've just been given a command, like from the the son of God, the king of kings, to, to go be on mission for him to go get food. Like, friends, this is about as good as it gets for a bunch of teen, teenage boys. They're thinking, we're ha- they're happy, they're thrilled. We get to eat and serve the master all at the same time. This is so good for them. But little do they know that at this point in time, they likely passed a Samaritan woman. She would have likely saw them because of the racial tension. She would have saw them. She would have likely gone, stepped aside. She probably would have held the pot of water. She probably would have moved it down. She would have not made eye contact. She would have lowered her head. But little do they know that they just passed a woman who will be the catalyst for the most significant Samaritan revival, likely in history up until this time. They're living, but they're not looking. They're active, but they're not aware. And again, here's what I've realized. I don't know about you, but God's interruptions are often terribly inconvenient. And so I wonder, 
as we see people like Jesus sees people? Here's a reflection question. Today, in this next season, are you willing to be inconvenienced and interrupted for God? Point number three. Going all in means embracing the uncomfortable. Now, friends, I know we're getting to know each other. We don't know each other, clearly, many of us at all. But I love being comfortable, okay? I love comfort. Now, some of you in this room, you love roughing it. Like you like the camping experience and all those kind of things. Now I'm, not, now, I'm not talking about like motorhome kind of camping things. Like you like the roughing kind of experience. And now, now living in Thailand, as, as I've shared, like it's hot. It's hot and it's hot all the time. And for, which means that it, you know, some of you in this room, you are normal sweaters. And some of you are gross sweaters. <laughs> Friends, I am a gross sweater. And so that means like when I'm in Thailand, you just sweat and you sweat all the time. And, and it's actually, if you go to a gym, like sometimes you know they have those little sanitizing napkins. Like you're supposed to like sanitize the machines or whatever. But there's always this one person. It's like you, you need to give them a circumference because they are like spraying liquid everywhere in the room. Like that's me. That's, that's who I am when I go to work out. It's terrible. So here we are in Thailand. We know it's hot. You're sweating. And, and my friend, Matthias, he's the stoic Swede. And, and he was saying, Darren, I, I know you really don't like camping, but I think we should go camp in the Thai jungle. But it's really awesome. And I'm like thinking, what? He's like, no, 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 it's, it's fantastic. They set up this canvas tent for you. They have a, a bamboo mat, kind of a bamboo floor that's about a couple feet off the ground. They provide everything for you. And it's going to be fantastic. And I'm thinking to myself, there's all these sarcastic things going through my mind, and sarcasm does not translate across culture very well at all. But I am literally thinking to myself, I would rather jump into a hornet's nest and get the pain of that over with than go sit in the middle of a Thai jungle for three days with all the bugs, the snakes, the scorpions, and sitting there in a pool of my own sweat that is just being soaked up into my sleeping bag all night long. Friends, that sounds like a picture of hell on earth to me. (laughs) I love comfort. I want a hotel with water pressure so hard that you need to turn it down because otherwise it hurts. Like today on a hot day, I I want air conditioning that is so cold that if I wanted it to, which I maybe don't, but if I wanted it to, I could see my breath. I I want nice, fresh towels, preferably brand new. That would be ideal, you know? And then, and then, I mean, I don't know, but I went into, I went into the hotel yesterday and some of this is embarrassing, but I go into the hotel, you know, you're in the bathroom. Do you ever do this? Like I literally scan which one is the old towel and which one's the new one. I take the new one every single time. I would love high thread count Egyptian cotton sheets with bamboo cooling principles. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds fantastic. I I want that too. Friends, I enjoy comfort, but here's, here's what I realized. Comfort, if we're not careful, can keep us from the cause of Christ. In this story, Jesus embraced the uncomfortable. He went and talked to a person that he was not supposed to talk to in a place that he was not supposed to go to, and to top it off, in a patriarchal society, it was woman, not just any woman, but a woman scorned by society. In this context, this was about as uncomfortable and as taboo as you can get. And not only that, as we're going to see, he has a very frank and open conversation with her. It doesn't matter when you lived or where you lived. Those kind of conversations are always uncomfortable. If you and I want to be difference makers for Jesus, he will ask us to embrace the uncomfortable. Why? Because that's what he did. That's what he continues to do, and he calls us to follow him. So a reflection question today. These kind of questions can be awkward sometimes. Is there anything keeping you from the cause of Christ? Are you willing to be inconvenienced? For Jesus. We're going to jump ahead a bit. Jesus and this woman, they continue to have a conversation. You can read it there, but we're going to pick this up in verse 16 to 19. He, Jesus, told her, so they're having this conversation. Oh, so kind of by the way, go, go call your husband, please, would you? I have no husband, she replied. Jesus says to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. Like, awkward. What have you just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. No kidding. I want to highlight something that's been on my heart for our time together. Going all in means we need to embrace the supernatural. Jesus told her about her life, things that he as a fully human person had no ability to know except the fact that because he was also fully divine. And the Bible tells us that as soon as we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit as our helper. And he can and does do the miraculous in and through his people. 
I had the privilege of meeting the, the former chief justice of Singapore when I was overseas. This was early on. And, and he said, Darren, God is doing it at work. He'd been retired for quite a while. And I said, could, could, could we sit down and have a, a coffee or a meal? And could you just share some of those stories? One of, one of the stories, uh, stories I'll, I'll share, because uh, I love his example of obedience. Um, his mentor, his pastor, kept telling him that he said, Justice, you need to go to the prisons and speak to the prisoners. Encourage them. Speak life over them. And he didn't want to. He says, I don't know if that's appropriate. And, and, and the pastor kept hounding him and hounding him. He says, you need to go. You need to do this. So month after month after month. And finally, the justice says, okay, I've had enough. I, I want to be respectful to my elder. And so I said, yes, I'll go, but on two conditions. One, I'm going to go on a Sunday when they don't have to come. It's, it's, it's voluntary. And I'm going to do it on a Sunday when I am on to preach at my local church because then I know I have an excuse and I can leave early and quickly. The pastor says, sure, just come. So he comes. And he gets up there, and he, he walks in the room. He's expecting to see 50 people, but instead of 50, it's almost 1,000 people. They all showed up. I, and, he, and I said, well, what did you talk about? He says, well, I just did the normal things that people say, you know, be good citizens, uh, behave well, give back to society once you come out, and, and you know, just really nothing overwhelming. He says, it was actually so lame that the pastor told me, he says, well, you could have said something a little more. And he says, but as, as, as I'm leaving, I'm walking out this side room, because again, I, I told him, I said, I can't stay very long, I gotta go preach. And um, he sees this, his man on the front, he just catches his eye, and he says, Darren, I've been, I've been trying to learn how to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit's prompting in my life. And he says, sometimes it's really inconvenient. And he says, as I'm walking, I catch this eye, and I, and I feel the Spirit. He says, I cannot tell you how strong I felt this voice in my mind say, go and wash this man's feet and bless him and show that you actually mean what you say. And he says, well, that can't be right. There's a thousand people in the room, Lord. I'm not going to do that. I'm the chief justice. Why, why would I do this? And he says, I began debating in my mind of what, and he says, I just knew the Lord was going to do this. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, what is going to be on the front page of the news on Monday morning? It's like, this is going to be awkward and terrible. And he says, but I knew I needed to do it. So I said, could you grab some water for me? And he says, I went up to this man. I asked him, could I, I, I really believe that I, I want the best for you. And one of the ways that Jesus calls me to serve you is to, I want to have an example of washing your feet that I am for you and want the Lord's best for your life. And he says it was awkward. And I mean, what's the man going to say? He says, I'm the chief justice. So of course he says yes. And um, so I get down and I wash his feet and I hear all this commotion and this rustling. He says, I didn't look. He says, I didn't even want to know what was going on. And he says, it, just, it was quick. It was informal. It wasn't, there was no fanfare. But then the man puts his hand on my shoulder when we're done. And he says, you don't know this, but I'm being released quite soon. And in my cell, I have plans how I was coming to kill you and your family. And he says, Darren, I, I can't really explain this, and I, I, don't, I don't know what's happening. And we have this incredible moment where he hugs me, and I hug him. And then I, as I'm hugging him, I look behind, because there was all this commotion, and the whole room had formed a line to be able to wash, to have me wash their feet. I said, what'd you do? He said, I told the pastor that you better call the church because someone else needs to preach. And he stayed. And at the same event, I was, I was speaking with someone else and he looked kind of down and he was a younger leader and I said, well, we're just getting to know him. I said, what, what's going on? Can I pray for you or what, what's happening? Because clearly he was distraught. He had just flown into Singapore from a large country in that region. And uh, he says, well, actually, last Saturday and Sunday, I was supposed to lead worship, and uh, I was sick on Friday, so I couldn't lead worship on Saturday. I was still just had a fever, but it broke over the night, so I was going to go on Sunday and lead worship again, so I go to this rented space, and of course, they have to be careful in this country. And uh, he says, I got there, but it was empty. There was nobody. They were all gone. And he says, I was looking around, and all of a sudden, a shopkeeper came out, and he says, are, what are you looking for? He says, well, I was looking for the group that gathers here. He says, oh, didn't you know? The police came last night and they took them all away. They're all gone. And I didn't know what to say. I don't know how to relate. And I think him noticing my, my awkwardness in this moment, he just kind of smiled and he looks at me and says, thankfully we have the Holy Spirit because he gives us the strength to do things that we should not do. And I will be leading worship again next weekend as soon as I get back. And I'm left with all I can say is thank you, Holy Spirit. I believe in supernatural things because I serve and follow a supernatural God. Why are we so surprised at miracles at times? Is not, is not he supernatural? If so, does he not do supernatural things? 
We don't always need better methods and plans. Yes, do your best thinking and do your best work. But we need people who believe and are filled by the supernatural power of God who enables us to go and do the very things that the world says cannot be done. Romans 8 tells us that the power that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. These, these stories we hear about this incredible, bold, bold courageous move and this, this, this powerful moment in a prison to this, this person that's living in a, in a very persecuted, difficult place and standing up to that and being bold as they follow. The Holy Spirit imparts power. Does that sound radical? Church, this is our heritage. Our heritage. This is us. Supernatural power is unleashed when we dare to be obedient, to be all in for Jesus Christ. Please, McDermott lines, don't settle for anything else. Now back to this story. Jesus goes on to explain how the good news of salvation is for everyone, not just for the Jews. You can read that in verses 21 to 24. But in verses 25 to 26, they're having this conversation again about salvation. I love how Eugene Peterson now, in his paraphrase, mentions this this passage. In verse 25, he says, The woman said, I don't know about all that salvation stuff, but I do know that the Messiah is coming. And when he arrives, we're going to get the whole story. I am he, says Jesus. You don't have to wait any longer or look any further. So many people are looking and waiting and searching for something more. So many, thousands and thousands and thousands of people come to this little country of Thailand searching for a spiritual experience. All the, so many of these people from Western countries that say there is no God, it's all dead, they go over there and they are desperately searching. The good news is you don't have to look any further. Jesus is here. Verse 27. Just then his disciples returned, and they're surprised to now see him. I mean, did they recognize the woman? Did they know, oh, that was the lady we passed? They see him talking to a woman, but no one asked, what do you want or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. And they came out of town and made their way toward him. One woman who has a reputation, who encounters Jesus Christ, everything changes, and the the town knows it and they want to go and meet Jesus. This is what happens when you go all in. He empowers you to do the things that the world says you should not do. But now in the meantime, you know, the the poor disciples, like they're always in catch-up, right? So here, here they're back at the well. Their conversation starts again. The disciples pressed him, Rabbi, eat. Remember, we, you told us to get food. Aren't you going to eat? He told them, I have food to eat you know nothing about. The disciples were puzzled. Who could have bought him food? John, did your uncle bring him some food? Peter, did you tell someone else that we were here, that Jesus would, like, what is going on? And Jesus says, the food that keeps me going is that I do the will of the one who sent me, finishing the work that he started. As you look around right now, wouldn't you say that in about four months it will be time to harvest? Like, he just pivots the conversation in a, in a moment. These young guys are familiar with farming, some fishing, but Jesus uses the analogies of farming. Jesus is saying, isn't one of your sayings, plant a seed and then wait four months and then it will be harvest time? Isn't that a thing? Basically, the meaning is relax. Once you plant, you, you, can, just, you can just chill. Sow the seed, kick back, relax, take it easy. And Jesus is saying, isn't that something you say sometimes? And I wonder for us, when it comes to spiritual things, is that sometimes something we say? I'll, do, I'll get to that. You know, not to sensationalize this, but you don't know what tomorrow will bring. One of the most defining moments of my life is I was standing, I was sit, singing worship at Beulah Lines Church. It was a Sunday, Saturday evening service. And we were, the, the, we were all standing up to, to sing the song when in the middle of the song, the man standing in front of me breathed his last and slumped over in the pew right in front of me. He went to see Jesus right in front of me. Friends, we do not know how much time we have been given. So when it comes to your faith journey, is there a decision you have delayed in the past that you should make today? Finally, point five is going all in. means fully embracing Jesus. It's not rocket science. Jesus was clear. He tells it like it is. In Romans, he says, confess with your mouth. If you believe that Jesus is Lord and believe in in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. He's like, he he saves us, but he calls us forward. In in Luke 6, he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I tell you to do? God is this action-minded God. I believe words without action behind them were never acceptable to Jesus. Jesus says, when I say, follow me, 
It's simple. I'm not trying to confuse you. He says, just, just do what I did. Do what I continue to do. And there is this desperation that God has been growing in my heart as I see thousands of thousands who do not understand, who do not yet know that there is more to life than this. Worship team is going to come up. But can I just say, I'm all in. I don't even know what that really means, to, what the true cost of that is, what sacrifices might come, what persecution might need to be endured. You know, when we, when we went overseas, my wife and I, Naomi and I, we, we felt we need to really give our kids to Jesus. It's easy. Well, maybe not easy. It's, it's doable to sacrifice yourself for a cause, isn't it? But what if that decision, what if the sacrifice lands on someone else, your loved ones, your kids? Coming back to Canada, I felt the same conviction. Persecution and challenges are continuing to grow. And those realities are becoming more real in this world that we live in each and every day. Now, I don't know what will happen, but friends, I'm not worried. Because I, just like a Samaritan woman, met Jesus and he radically changed my life and I am all in. And I will do, I will do anything short of sin to follow his voice and his call and his purpose and his name to make, sorry, in his name to make his name more famous each and every day. And I don't know if this would happen, but there's that moment in the story, if you go back and read it, when Jesus is talking to his disciples and he just says, like, turn around, look. Look, you guys are missing it. Look, the harvest field is ripe and there are thousands and thousands of people coming from the town towards them. And I wonder if there's times in your personal life as a church where the Lord calls us to do things and it doesn't always make sense. And I wonder when he calls us home and he says, remember that story with the disciples when I told them to turn around, open your eyes, he says. And I wonder if he says to us in heaven, when our time on earth is done, he says, hey, McDermott Drive Alliance, Darren, I want you to turn around, open your eyes. Look what I see. Look what... Look what happens as you live faithful, faithfully for me. And you didn't know. I knew. I know you didn't know. And sometimes you see it and many times you didn't. But thank you for being on mission with me. Friends, this is what I live for. This is what I dream for. This is what I'm willing, Lord willing, to die for. That Jesus is everything and he can do anything through your life if you let him. But you and I together must go all in. Can I just say there is something about our unity, about us being all in together with what, is, what God is doing that makes this message so believable to a world that is more and more fractured and siloed all the time. If we are going to accomplish this mission God has for us, we need each other. It's the way he designed it. Friends, this is, this is why this newsletter that I showed you earlier, it's not, this is, again, it's not marketing or advertising. It's about being together, about encouraging each other about being on a journey here in the community he calls us, and then this, broad, this, this broader story of the Christian Missionary Alliance in Canada and to the ends of the earth. 2,000 years ago, Jesus told, he told us that he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Victory is assured. The question is, do you want to be part of his story? And today is the day, an opportunity again, to perhaps dedicate for the first time, or maybe the 50th time, to Jesus that yes, I am yours, and I will follow. So we're going to go into time of worship. And as we do that, I'll, just, I'll leave you sitting right now, but then you'll be asked to stand if you'd like. But perhaps there's a decision today that the Lord has placed on your heart. You know, sometimes this word conviction gets a bad rap. Conviction is this beautiful, physical representation in our lives of God's passionate pursuit of humanity for each of us that he's calling us into something more. And so maybe there's a decision that he would have for you, perhaps the first time to follow Jesus, perhaps a different decision. But then there's also the standing and making the decision to do this together. I am more and more convinced that we need to hold fast to each other, to encourage one another to do this together. Friends, I am filled with more hope and anticipation and joy than in any other time of my ministry service. These are incredible days to be serving the king. And he's calling us into this great adventure. What will you decide today?
if you'd like, if you'd like to respond by standing. I invite you to stand if you're able. If you need to sit and pray. Maybe you need to pray with the person beside you. Whatever it is, however God is responding to you, you know what he's saying. You know what he's been speaking to you. We're going to spend some time just responding in a song, a simple song of surrender. Of inviting the Holy Spirit to lead us as we call upon his name.
that statement, I hope that you allowed the Holy Spirit to reveal those things that you're holding back. Maybe today you're not all in. Maybe you've been holding back. Maybe you've been saying, I'm not going there. I'm not going to talk to that person. I'm not going to embrace the supernatural. Uh, You're going to play in your comfort zones. I hope that today, uh, again, Darren, thank you so much for the word that you shared with us. As you invite us in as a family of churches from across Canada to be all in, that's our call. This is, this is what we're, we're called to do. And this morning, if you've come and maybe you carry a burden on your, on your heart, uh, maybe you recognize that you're not all in and you want somebody to pray with you, pray for you. We have a couple of leaders down here by the cross just at the end of the service, make your way to them. And maybe being all in, maybe that's your first step is just to literally step out of, into the aisle and come down and, and, and just tell them, you know what, today I'm all in and have them pray for you. And know that wherever it is that you go this week, that every moment, whether it would seem like a small event or a large event, Uh, is an opportunity for you to make Christ known and to be all in. I want to invite you back uh, over the next few days, Monday night, Tuesday night, both at 7 o'clock. We're going to be gathering together with our district family to lift up Jesus' name. I hope that you'll be able to join us. And uh, we'll be meeting in person, we'll be online, and uh, just hearing more about what God's doing across our denomination. And so have a great and blessed day. Uh, Sunday and a a great and blessed week and may God show you all kinds of opportunities for you to make him known. Have a great week. God bless.